Hello everybody, this is Miranda's Crafter and you are in my space. I'm thankful that you joined me today. What I want to do is I'm going to go through my private Tech Test 3 content creator's footage and I'm going to pull out everything that's relevant to crafting because you know obviously if you follow me and you see my channel and the description that I have on there and everything I want my focus in Mirandus with the content that I make to be crafting and economic focused so things like selling of products crafting of products harvesting of items inventory stuff all that kind of stuff Anything that relates to those areas are probably going to be what my main focus for my content is. It probably will not be everything that I post because I <clears throat> think I'll be posting some other stuff as good items come up and all that. But I'm, I'm going to be focused on those kind of items for Miranda in specific. So today what I want to do is I want to take you through my footage and just... Before I even start, I want to preface this by saying that I hope you will be kind on the quality of the footage because during this tech test, you got to understand that this is not an alpha build, this is not a beta build, this is pre all that. Um, yes, there has been significant improvement from the last test to this test in the look of the graphics and the gameplay performance. But it's nowhere near where the Mirandus development team wants it. But they are making definite progress, and that's that's for sure. And you'll see that as you watch my content, especially if you've been involved in any of the previous playtests. You'll you'll see a marked improvement. Um, also, I wanted to say that moving around with the mouse in game is very jerky at this time. I don't really see a lot of ways to change your mouse movement options to make it more smooth or fluid, so I apologize for the jerky looking up, down, all around type of stuff that goes on, but there was just no way for me to really control it at this point because everything is just kind of needs optimization in so many different areas, but that's to be expected with where we're at with the test. Also, I want to apologize for some of the images that you'll see because they may be hard to see. Uh, because you got to remember that Mirandus is a game that's being developed with an intense day and night cycle. So when it's nighttime, it's nighttime, bros. And you think you can see even when you're in town it's challenging sometimes because if you're not near an area with a light source or if you're not carrying a torch or if you don't have a lantern of the sun there may be times when things are really dark in the footage and I mean I guess I could have waited till daytime to film everything but we only had like an hour and a half in this private content creators test to get this footage so everything was kind of rush 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 so anyway so let's get right into it so I think what we ought to do is start with and and you know just remember this is a tech test so these this stuff will probably more than likely change a lot so let's get to start with the look at your backpack and your inventory so in game to open up your inventory you hit obviously the i command or the i key i mean and it brings you to this screen where you can see your inventory storage locations and the items that you have in your inventory obviously right now i have nothing but a bunch of resources because i've just started the game at this point you can see that you have three available weapon slots and you can, you know, bounce between those by hitting one, two, or three on the keyboard at this time. Your gear has uh, six, nine, ten slots right here. You've got a helmet, a necklace, a body or chest piece, gloves, shield, ring, arrows, or a quiver, I mean, arrows, boots, and an instrument. Um, I think this will probably be more involved later. But for right now, this is what was showing. 
we only had the option to really have a weapon, which you'll see here in a little bit when I get to the weapon crafting stations with things like bows, clubs, uh, swords, and then we had the option to have a body piece of armor, glove piece of armor, boots of armor, and I think those were the only slots that we could fill during this tech test. <clears throat> now, if that is how it's going to be when we go into the open tech test on the 15th, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they'll drop in more craftable items like maybe a shield and open up that slot for us. But for right now, it was just weapons and these three gear slots right here was what we could build and equip to. You start the game with this stuff right here, and it's just your basic linen armor, uh, linen gloves, linen boots, linen body. Uh, there were no arrows craftable in the play test. I know in previous tests we've seen things like true arrows and, you know, all different kinds of stuff. But in this tech test, there were no arrows, which it was cool from a perspective of, I want to focus on doing other things rather than constantly running around and crafting arrows at this point because I'm trying to see the world for the first time. That kind of took a lot of uh, stress off of me as far as getting able to get out an adventure because I didn't have to worry about crafting so much gear to start with to be able to actually get out there and try to do some damage. So let me just kind of let this inventory footage play for a second so that you can see some of the things that I'm hovering over and their armor values. Um, obviously, if you need to, you can pause the video and look at them more closely. But you saw your basic linen starting gear there. Okay, so now what I want to do uh, after the little shot of the inventory section is over, you'll see here I'm looking at some harvestable wheat. We'll get into the harvesting here in just a minute, so I want to just kind of skip over that. But I'm going to move to the next section of my video, which will be a look at the wood shop crafting station. Okay, and as you can see here, like I was saying, it's nighttime in the city and you can see that there there are lights hanging in different locations and you can see kind of the glow that they put off and there's uh, some lighting here inside the actual station itself but you kind of get an idea of the of the um, ambiance of the area you know what it feels like when it's nighttime even in a city so that's a good look at that uh, what we have here is the wood shop crafting station and we'll go ahead and go in there and look at that and and what's available to be crafted so if you look at the station you can press f to craft and then you get into the inventory of things that you can make or refine um, I don't know if this will be how it's set up when we get in the live build, but right now they have the items that you refine from your basic resources and the items that you can craft all in one inventory like this. You can see it is the wood shop, and it gives you the option to craft at this time. Obviously, things will change, uh, but you can craft a club which is basically a weapon to go in the weapon slot. So that's a finished craftable. And then you'll have the ability to make a pole, a thick pole, pine strip, U strip, poplar, and ash strips. These are all components that will go into other crafted items that you will have the ability to craft at other stations. But just like many games, you make, com you know, take your basic resources, turn them into components, take them to different areas and actually make those items with those components. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit when we get to some of the other stations. But I'm going to go ahead and let you get a view through of each one of the items as I mouse over it so you can kind of get an idea as far as components required or resources, I guess I should say, resources required to make these components. I kind of jumped around a little bit because I was in the process of actually making stuff while I was doing it and then I realized, oh, I might ought to 
kind of look through each item and let everybody get a view of what requires what. So you can see here, uh, like if you're going to make this pole, you will need three of your basic pine resource to make one pole, and then the pole will go into something else like the club or the, you know, whatever. So, yeah. Like the club takes two pole. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause just a second and I'm going to skip forward to some other woodshop crafting station footage that I have so that I can keep it all together in the same section for each station. Okay, so now I'm going to give a second look at the woodshop crafting station. I came back later and, and did a little bit more looking at this same one. So we're at the wood shop. Press F to craft. I think this is kind of more where I realized that, hey, maybe I ought to go through and let everybody look at each item. Two pole for the club, three pine for the pole. Thick pole takes ash, and it gets, you know, relatively more difficult to craft as you go up the tiers of wood. They kind of have these items in the inventory as kind of a tier level I, I look at them as. Pine was the easy wood resource to get. It was everywhere in the starting area at the docks where you first start. There was a tree right there. Um, in the first starting area that you go out to where you can actually do some fighting and exploring, pine is everywhere. Now you, poplar, ash, I would say if I was to guess that these were going up in the tier list as far as difficulty to acquire because the area will probably be harder where those items are. Just a guess, but I'm just kind of, that's what I'm seeing. Um, I did not see you, Poplar, or Ash. I really don't know if they were in the test or not at this time, so I can't really speak to that because... With just such a limited amount of time that we had, I was more focused on, I, I kind of wish I would have been more focused on just taking footage of all these crafting stations because there was a couple of crafting stations that I realize now that I actually missed and didn't get footage of, but oh well, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. It's just a couple days till we get back in and I'll take some more and make some better, more high quality videos. But Right now, I, I didn't really have the ability to really strike out and explore the region as much as I would have liked to. Um, Wasif, Mr. Amon, one of the spearheads of the project, said that the map that we were in was, the area that we were in was really big. And they would be surprised if any of us made it to the end of that. So the possibility for you to get farther and farther away from the starting area to actually locate some of these higher tier woods was probably based on exploration and I just really didn't have enough time to do that because I I came in here I grabbed some footage real quick I tried to craft some of the starting gear and then I was out and about with my group I was running with um, dubstep rod and M rack uh, those two from Masters of Materium Guild. And then we also had a guy named Cristiano in our party as well. Uh, we were a four-man team. They broke us up into four-man teams. And exploration and actually getting out and fighting was just so much fun that that's basically what I focus most of my time on. <clears throat> Sorry, I drank a coffee. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the rest of this. Poplar, ash, and boom. Now I'm off to the next station. Okay, so what I have next for you is a look at the Metalworks crafting station. That's where I'm headed at this point. You can see right here in my field of view. This is kind of a, uh, a look from far away at the Metalworks crafting station. Now I don't know if these really uh, coincide with what they consider a 5x5 in the uh, NFT 
buildings that we have purchased. I don't know if, you know, the archery stand is going to be the wood shop or the archery stand crafting station that I have later on in the video. But if I was just to guess, I would think that, yes, these would coincide with the 5 by 5s that we currently have the ability to purchase and, and a lot of us own right now. So, you know, I'm really excited to see what the bigger ones look like and what they offer as far as inventory of available crafted items or resource items that can be broke down or whatever. Uh, these, all of the crafting stations in this playtest build were all 5x5s, five five, I think, is if that's what they're considering this size to be, then they were all this. So everything I'm showing you is at the 5x5 five five level at this stage of the game. Okay, so we're going to go in and we're going to look at the Metalworks crafting station. You can see right off the bat that at the Metalworks, you have a higher tier of armor available. We have uh, the, let me try to expand this so I can drop this bar down. Well, it won't go away, so whatever. Uh, we have the Brigandine armor and different more powerful weapon options spears hammers warhammers uh, swords obviously we have this sexy looking item right here called the voltaic i hope that's how you pronounce it i probably slaughtered that voltaic sword and as you get into these items at the metalworks crafting station they require a lot more complex components to actually make so let's go through and i think i did a pretty decent job of of mousing over each one so you can see the items obviously my attention was drawn to that one right away But then I go up and I let you see the long sword, the champion sword. And you can see now we're starting to get some different things. We're getting charcoal, we're getting steel, we're getting leather straps. Uh, these were all things that were made from other components, like charcoal was from burning pine. Steel was from combining iron and something else, but I didn't get to see that so I'm not 100% sure on that but that's an item that is made a com secondary component leather straps were made from sinew that was harvested from the animals like the deer the wolf the rabbits um, from their pelts so these are all secondary components then we look at the spears they need poles obviously higher quality components for the higher tier weapons and then we get down we're looking at the brigandine armor um, you know these this is pretty powerful as far as what was available in the game I think that the brigandine armor was the strongest armor that you could craft at this time um, and you can see that it had quite a hefty component cost for it as well. So this is not going to be something that you're just going to run into the game and get right away. Because there were probably a few people in game that actually made this highest tier level of gear. But one thing you've got to keep in mind is they may have got this accomplished within the hour. But I don't know how possible this is going to be in the actual live test that's going live on the 15th, at least not right away, because there are going to be so many people running around, and the way they have the looting set up right now is if you tag a monster, meaning you actually do damage to it, when it dies, you have the chance to loot it. But so does everybody else that tagged that particular monster. So what you're going to see a lot of is you're going to see a lot of groups of people all attacking a monster and then ganging up on it as it falls, trying to grab the loot. I hate this. I hate that because I'm somebody that my time is precious to me. <coughs> so when I 
spend the effort to kill something. I want to get the reward. And I don't want to have to fight other people for it. So I really hope that they're going to rethink this. And that's just for now. I really hope, um, man, if they do that in the live game, gosh, I'm going to be so frustrated. Because, yes, that will make it harder. So that could be cool in a way, but for the most part, it's just going to suck. Because that means you're going to have to spend way more time to get a lower amount of resources. And you're going to constantly have to be looking for areas to farm that nobody is at. So it's just going to kill interaction and it's just going to it's just going to cause problems in my opinion. I really hope that Mirandus developers, if you're listening to this, Please do not institute that kind of looting system. If I tag a monster, just give me private loot so that everybody gets a fair shake at what they can get. This run to the monster and grab it before everybody else, that sucks. Anyway, end of rant. <coughs> so as you can see, a lot of these components are getting tougher to acquire. They're going to need more base components. This one right here, you may be asking, what's onyx? Well, it's a volcanic stone, but it was dropped from goblins in this playtest. So if you kill a goblin in this playtest, you got one onyx, if you were lucky enough to be able to loot it. Um, there were a lot of people, and I saw, <laughs> I didn't realize this at the time. This is kind of funny, a little side note. I didn't realize this at the time when I was actually playing, but when I went back and started watching my footage, I started to realize that there were lots of people that weren't even attacking the monsters. They were just kind of running around and hanging around and waiting for them to go down, and then they would run in there and try to loot them. They weren't, and those guys were smart because the monsters were tuned so toughly that if they hit you three, four times, you were dead. So if you were one of the ones that were in there trying to take swings at this stuff so that, you know, you could get a chance at the loot, you were more than likely going to die and lose all your looted resources because once you died, you dropped your items and could not get them back. So <laughs> the smart ones in the test were actually the ones that were hanging back and ninja looting. They were just kind of hovering around and waiting for stuff to go down and then sneaking in there at the last second right before it went down and, and getting that grab on that loot. So if they have that set up like that, you may see me doing some of that too. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. I'm not going to lie because I got to get some resources, man. But anyway, uh, yeah, so this is the tougher of the crafted sets of armor to craft. You see boots and then gloves. And that's the metal workstation. A little look at the forge there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the next one that I have on the list for you. And I hope I pronounced this right because it was kind of a different word than I'm used to for this type of profession. And it was called the clothiary. I think that's how you say that word. Maybe it's cloth clothiary or clothiary. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with clothiary. This is a look at the Clothiaria cloth, Clothiary Crafting Station. You can see here the rows of fabric lined up and some, you know, stretched out and all that. It's kind of a neat looking aesthetic. So you go in here, Clothiary, and you bring up your menu. You can see here that on this one we kind of have the first tier of the armor that can be crafted. So this is probably going to be one of your first stops right here. After you start the game, you're going to harvest flax, and that is what will be made into linen and linen thread. Now, flax is going to be very important to grab at the start because you're going to want to get this padded armor on as quick as possible. While you're out in the world trying to adventure, you'll at least have a starter survival point uh, to aim to. The 
padded armor provides double the defense that the starter linen armor does. Um, so yeah, the padded armor itself actually provides just a, like one more than double, I think, but the boots and the gloves, they're all roughly about double the armor of the linen. So they're definitely a good investment because they don't really take hardly anything to craft. They just take some linen and some flax to make into linen. And you'll see here in just a second what the component costs of all those are. So pause the screen, do the math um, when I mouse over, and you can see just how much flax you'll need to collect to actually make these items at the start. So when you look at it, one flax makes one thread, and three flax makes one linen. So the cost of these items will be for the linen. So just multiply that out by the flax and you can kind of get an idea of how much flax you'll need to gather at the start to make your first full set of armor. Now keep in mind the linen thread will be used for other things, mainly the bow strings. Uh, so when you go here in just a little bit and we look at the archery uh, let's see, it's called the Archery Stand Crafting Station. You'll see how much the component cost is for the bows as well, and that will require flax. So I'll let you get a look at the items and the component costs here. Then we got linen thread, takes one flax per. I went ahead and I made some. Didn't really know at this first point how much of anything I needed, but I started off with about 50 flax. And I just made a few of each so that I could kind of get started making some stuff. I think I messed up and made too many linen thread at the start. And I had to go back and actually get some more flax to make the armor. And that's what I did. But you can see as we look at the component costs, it takes linen thread plus linen for both of these items. So that's, you know, do the math on that and you can see how much of these items you're going to need for each one of those items. Okay, and right here, while I have a good shot of these two, I just want to throw them in. Um, like a ding dong, I was so focused on other stuff that I didn't even look at these two stations. But they had it set up in the playtest where if you harvest wheat you can come to this food stand or bread stand or I don't know what you what it's called because I'm not even sure I actually went over there and looked at it and you can make bread to eat right then as you make it to increase your uh, stamina um, there's a bar down here that shows health and then stamina and the health was regenerated in these little areas back here in these tents. You could sleep at the rest at the tent and it would regenerate your health. But to regenerate your stamina, you had to come here and make bread and eat it. And it, it just had a basic component cost of so much wheat into flour and then so much flour into bread. And I didn't get a breakdown on that. Sorry. Um, I honestly never really got to the point that I felt like I needed to come back here and refill my stamina. I died like three times during the play test, and I was so cautious of not overusing my stamina that you can see right here the commands that you had available to you in the test. Of course, you had WASDA movement, your weapon swapping, you can jump with the space bar, and then right here was your sprint command, the shift button. I did it a couple times just to see what it was like, and it did have a noticeable improvement to my movement speed, but I was so scared of running out of stamina that I never really did sprint, and by the time I got to the place where I thought that I might need to go back and make some bread to get my stamina back, I died anyway, so it never really became a thing for me to come here and do this. Now, in a longer play test where I'm more cautious and starting to get my feet under me as far as, you know, how to stay alive and better gear and all that, I will definitely come back and utilize this station more. But for this test that I was in, I didn't have time. Obviously, this would be like the butchery or the meat stand or whatever it's called. I did not look at that either. Um, there were 
deer parts and and rabbit parts and wolf parts that you would get from looting and i'm assuming that this is where you would go to possibly make meat and sinew uh, break those down for sinew because sinew was some of the crafting cost component cost in some of the other items that i never really got to to look at so here's just kind of a thousand yard view of these two sorry i didn't get to looking at those but i'll definitely get you know all of the crafting stations in much more quality and detail whenever i have time to actually focus on getting some recording okay so now we're getting a look at something that i know that i'm going to be uh, hitting pretty regular because my main focus is going to be with the green cloak the wood harvesting the carpentry the bow arrow making stuff like that so the archery stand crafting station is what I have for you now to get a look at you can see uh, making bows was a pretty popular thing to do during this test because you know obviously fighting at ranged with the difficulty tuning of the monsters right now was kind of the smart play um, if you were looking at harvest or getting your loot though it was kind of a bad deal because you were at range and then when it died you had to run in to try to get your loot but there was already people there looting it before you even got there so Staying alive, it was a smart play. Trying to get loot, maybe not. I don't know. You'll have to figure that one out on your own based on how the world feels when there's so many people and they're playing together. But for this, let's get a look at the actual crafting station. We'll go on in. We're looking at the archery stand crafting station right now. And as you can see at this time, there were no arrows. Uh, they decided to turn that off for this playtest. Not really 100% sure if they're going to go ahead and leave those off for the public live test. I did never really hear any of the developers say that that was going to be a thing or not. So you could possibly expect to see arrows here, or you could not. It could still be like this, or there could possibly be a whole list of arrows that you can craft here as well. In tests in the past, I have seen footage of arrows to be crafted here at this station. So obviously you can say that the archery stand is where that stuff is going to be made. You can see them laying right here. The aesthetics on, on the game so far are really cool. You can see some arrows in the barrels back there as well. I'm really digging it. Total Valheim feel, really. What you know, it goes without saying because Mirandus is being developed with the Unity engine, which is the same engine that they developed Valheim in. So yeah, it should have a lot of the same feel. So we'll go ahead and look at the component cost. The short bow, which was what I ran with right at the start, and it was, you know, very nice, uh, to very quick to get you going. It took two pine strips and three linen threads. So here's an example of an item that you're going to craft where you're going to have to hit two different stations to get the components for it. Uh, that's going to be a common theme. And yeah, the bow was a nice item to start with. Honestly, I never even really had time to get into crafting anything else like a club. So I never got to try the melee route. I was too focused on trying to survive. So at range just sounded like a much better option for me personally. Um, in the next test, though, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experience all different routes. Longbow. And then you see here we start to get some sinew as a crafting cost uh, for the longbow and the champion bow. That was what would have been made in the uh, meat stand with the animal parts type thing. Okay, now I think I dove into my inventory a little bit and equipped that bow that I just made. So we'll look at that. Okay, yeah, you see I got the bow in my inventory now, and I'm going to go ahead and equip it. 
give a little story about it. It says, favored by the Citadel Scouts, these bows are not ideal for hunting, but effective enough against goblins. And you can see here we have a damage rating of 6 to 6. Not really sure what that's about. I'm sure that will get tweaked later, but it looks like I did 6 damage per actual hit. So if that's what we're calculating, then obviously the other bows would probably do more damage. And you just drag and drop, and it was on there. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next area. And the next area, and it's going to actually be the last of the crafting stations that I show you, because like I said, I didn't think to grab the other two that were over to the left-hand side over here. Uh, this will be the tannery crafting station we'll look at. You can see it right here. And this is the tannery. So you can see here, this is where you start to bring those parts and the sinew to make things like leather, tough leather, leather straps, tough leather straps. Because here's where you get your second tier of armor. The leather is a step up from the padded, which obviously will be a higher crafting component cost, but it also provides a higher defense rating. So getting your padded, running back out to the world, and starting to harvest some deer, wolf, rabbit parts so that you can make the components for the leather should be your next goal. First goal should be to get to padded. Second goal should be to get to leather. Third goal, if the components carry on through this test like they did ours, brigandine armor would be your third goal. And I think that's your top tier of items that you can get in the test unless something changes between now and then. So we'll go ahead and look at some of the component costs. Leather takes a deer skin. Tough leather takes a wolf skin. Leather straps takes the previous components. And that all goes into the leather armor. Now, here you'll also see, just like the bow, you're going to have a combination of different stations in effect here. So you're going to have the clothiery with the linen, and then the tannery with the leather parts. So you're going to have to run to different stations to make this a thing. So just, you know, pause the video, take note of the component cost for these items, and then break it down into their individual, and you can calculate it out exactly how much you need so that you can kind of have a plan, which would be smart. Because right at the start of this test, Everybody is going to be focused on trying to get geared up so we can go take that mother down because, I mean, reward, you know, it's going to be the thing right off the bat. Everybody's going to be focused on trying to make that happen. So you want to have a plan. You want to have a crafting component cost already jotted down and notated to the side so that every time you die and you got to redo this, you know, okay, I got to go kill seven deer. I got to go get 50 pine. I got to go get 50 flax. And you can just run and just robotically do these things and, and get back in the game as fast as possible. Because if they have the crafting and inventory management set up the way it was in our test, you could A, not give anybody any items, so it wouldn't do us any good to have a main crafter standing at the bench making everything for everybody because he could not pass those items out to anybody. It was just for yourself. And B, you cannot loot your items upon death. So if you die, it's permadeath. You start over. Wipe the slate clean. You've lost all your stuff. You can't go back to your corpse and get your items again. So having a crafting component cost list is going to be really crucial. And I'm going to work on compiling the math on that and having it wrote down. And, and I'll uh, probably post that in my description later once I figure it out. I haven't had a chance to go through and actually do the math on all those items yet, so I'm still working on it. But anyway, yeah, that's a smart thing to do. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of the leather gear. Leather 
gloves. So actually, they <laughs> I, I just noticed this. They have the boots and the gloves misnamed to where gloves are boots and yeah, boots are boots are named gloves and gloves are named boots. I didn't <laughs> notice that when I was looking at this the first time, so that's kind of funny. But you can see leather straps, leather linen, same same pattern. And then the gloves, which are boots, same pattern. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that's going to pretty much be it for the crafting item breakdown, the crafting component cost breakdown, those kind of things. Um, that's pretty much the best info from this play test footage that I have. So I'm going to leave the crafting section with that. What I will do real quick, though, is I want to kind of give you an idea of the harvestables and what they look like, because it may help some of you to have an idea of what it is that you're even looking for, because some of the trees in, you know, example, the pine, were kind of difficult to figure out which ones to harvest at first, because not every tree you run up to gives you resources. There's... 10 million trees and only a few of them that look a specific way are the actual ones to harvest and I think a lot of the resources are the same way. So I'm going to give you a quick little look at what those harvestable resources look like. I'm not really going to worry about telling you where the locations are because you can figure that out on your own once you know what you're looking for. It's not that big of a deal to find them. They're all over the place. So right here, I'm coming up on some flax. It says hold F to harvest flax. And the way they have this stuff set up right now is you just basically stand there, look at it, and you can harvest over and over and over. The items never degrade. The items never go away. So once you have a total crafting component cost list built up for yourself it's not a big deal to actually go to one node harvest everything you need move on to the next and then boom go to the crafting station and break it all down um, here's an example of what it looks like to actually hold fn harvest you'll see in my inventory notification boom one flax in backpack boom two boom three so you can see that getting a substantial amount of items just takes a few minutes. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. You can see I'm changing my view just a little bit. So the view area to harvest on some of these items is a little forgiving. Right here next to it, I have wheat. I'm trying to find the actual targeting zone to be able to harvest. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And you can see I'm harvesting wheat here, which will be broke down into flour to make bread. Flax is broke down into the linens to make the bowstrings, the linen cloth. And that is wheat and flax. So now I think what I'll do is I'll show you an example of what pine looks like. I'm headed to the pine location right now to show you what an actual pine harvestable tree looks like. But here's a shot real quick out in the adventuring zone. You can see the deer. Uh, there are a distinction between the does and the bucks. You have to kind of be careful uh, when you're out there killing and harvesting these. The bucks seemed a lot more aggressive than the does did. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure whether they gave different components on the harvest because I only got to kill like one deer and one wolf and one rabbit. It was just run, 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 run. So I really didn't have a chance to capture those as harvestable items. And I hate that because I wish I would have. I would have liked to have shown you the skins, the pelts, and broke down into the sinew and all that, and the straps. And But I just didn't get the ability to do that in this test yet. But I will. I'll have it broke down ideally uh, individual videos for each type of resource and crafting station with the most detail and, and best quality in this next test because I'll have a lot more time. Okay, I think if I remember right, right here is where I'm actually coming up on a pine. I'm looking around for a pine. 
and I'm trying to find one that actually gives me a hit so that I can get a craft on it, and there, there the dude is right there. So, yeah, I apologize because it's dark, but Mirandus, you know, make Mirandus hard. We've got to have an intense day-night cycle. But this right here is a pine. This is the way it looks. Right now, all of them look the same. So I don't know in the future if they are planning on opening it up to where different types of graphical pine tree representations will all be harvestable or not, or whether it's just this one. But for right now, this is the guy right here. So we'll go up and you'll see the actual harvestable hit zone to where you can get the hold F on it. You can see my backpack one pine per harvest. And I was getting quite a few right here because, you know, needed quite a bit. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's a look at the harvestables that I was able to capture. Like I said, I did not see poplar. I did not see you. I did not see ash. So I'm not 100% sure about if they were even in the test or where they were or what they look like. But we'll definitely scope that out on the next one. Um, but... I just wanted to say thank you for being with me today. This video has already went longer than I had intended it to, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off now. Uh, but I just wanted to say that I appreciate your time. And if this content has helped you be able to get prepared for the playtest, then by all means, please go ahead and throw a like and a subscribe for a small-time YouTuber. Help me grow so that I can get this content out and help grow the player base so that we can all have a better experience in game together. Uh, I appreciate your time and also I do want to give a plug for my guild, the Masters of Materium. If you need a good guild to run with in Mirandus that already has a really well established player base and a good selection of class people then you could not go wrong by checking out the Masters of Materium and their link to all their socials and YouTube page and Discord and website and all that will be in my description below. So thank you for your time and I appreciate it and I hope you have a good day. This is Miranda's Crafter. Thank you for joining me.